Hello, my name is Rose. This is Shane. Hey, everybody. My boyfriend um, and father of my children. <laughs> um, so I've talked on my channel a lot about AVPD, avoidant personality disorder, and Shane. I, I mean, we we've been doing a lot of research together and a lot of people called him out saying that he probably had borderline personality disorder so we started doing some research yeah there's a big fight online um over dumb stuff as online stuff goes and uh when people attack me i usually go straight for the jugular i don't uh i don't play with, uh, well with others sometimes well, that's not true. I mean, I'm in band. I've been in bands my whole life, but uh, I don't know. Like the people poke me instead of uh, trying to figure out, hey, what 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 is the the, the communication breakdown here? I'm always just like, okay, you are the bear. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, we looked up the traits for borderline personality disorder. And we're going to talk about them today. So. Number one tra trait is fear of abandonment. So uh, people with BPD tend to have a strong fear of being left alone or abandoned. Do you feel that way? Well, that's a very weird one to me because who doesn't, uh, that's the whole, actually throughout my uh, research on this, um, a lot of those signs do speak towards my life, but at the same time I was like, it, I didn't realize everybody wasn't like that. I yeah, mean, everyone feared abandonment. Fear of abandonment, the government. Um, I don't think I've ever. Well. Cops. <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I just, I, I had all these different. You, you think that cops and government fear abandonment, or you? No, I fear, I fear the government. I fear cops. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I fear. Uh, I mean, I, the fear of abandonment is not really a, a thing to me because I've never had a problem making friends and, um, meeting people, you know, um, but when you read what it says about the fear of abandonment, there does, it shows, um, I don't know why I always do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the signs were there. It's in the fear, yeah. fear, uh, borderline person, uh, fear of abandonment. There's a lot of different, uh, ways fear comes out and, um, Insecure, and actually, it goes. Another one is uh, un no, 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 no. Hmm. Well, unstable relationships. Actually, the next one. So the, the two kind of go together, I think. Um, fear of abandonment, thinking people don't like you. Um, you fear that people don't like you. Yeah. Um, I mean, it seemed they like me at first, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I make friends easy, like I said. And We're very honest. I guess people do like that. They want, well, <laughs> they like it right until you tell them something they don't like. Yeah, I guess that's like, true. I don't agree with that one thing you said, so you're a piece of shit. <laughs> that does happen a lot. And so I guess, I, I don't people know. very sensitive. It's, like, really sensitive. It's and strange these days. Um, what? Why would you think that any, I, I just, it doesn't make sense to me, like, why would you think there's seven and a half billion people on the planet? How many of those people do you think have the exact same point of view as you on everything? Because I, I would think, like, none. <laughs> well, <I laughs> or feel, close to none. I feel like people, like, mirror other people, like, that they know. Uh, like, my old band, uh, Hellas, well... We went through all kinds of members, and it, it's, it's kind of a cursed band. Um, we've talked about that in the, in the band. <laughs> like, we literally had multiple people die in it. So, anyway, that's off topic. But um, when we had our old drummer, Axel, uh, Frank and Corey would often take right-wing stances just to piss off Axel. And then we've got a new drummer, Johnny, their friend Johnny, they're ultra left wing now. All you know, it's like all of a sudden it's like I don't, I don't. I've always considered myself left wing, and my right wing friends definitely consider me left wing. My left wing friends now consider me a trumper or something. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, Debbie wasn't Debbie. Didn't Debbie become a trumper also? Debbie did become a trumper. I'm not a trumper. Um, I don't. 
Like, why would you glorify one? Just, just I don't. Yeah. Why? why how? How? How like, come even if it, politicians if it's Biden, are becoming? If it's Obama, like. Yeah. They're not perfect. What do you mean they're not perfect? Like, of course they're not fucking perfect. They're, they're politicians, <laughs> and they're, they're they literally got their place by lying and dealing. It's like our our system's beyond messed up. So the fear of abandonment. Um, I don't. Yeah, where are we? <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, I mean, I guess it might be male, like whatever. Uh, I feel like you felt like I was abandoning you every time I went to work when we first started dating. But uh, where are you go to your friends? Like, where are you at? You're not home yet. Yeah, yeah, that gotta be true. But then you had a weird job. Like, she left at two in the morning. <laughs> I worked at M- Loaded Trucks at UPS, and so you had to be there depending on what day and what time of the year it was. You'd start as early as like eleven p.m. the night before, or like three thirty the next day, um, and you would get off when you were done. And usually, you were the trucks were supposed to be out the door by nine, but you might have a truck that was late and so you got to stay late and so I was home at different times and Shane would always be freaking out like what do you, what do you mean you got to stay an extra 30 minutes like I mean, was well uh, there was uh, also other factors there in my, in my head there like uh, I guess I mean I could be fear of abandonment but I also had not, you thought I was going to cheat on you and not be okay anymore well, you also you were very um, at the time there's all kinds of signs that she was going to cheat on me. <laughs> Stop pissing me off all the time. <laughs> yeah, and then, like there was just it was a very unstable relationship, which actually goes to the next sign. Weird. Uh, yeah, so like the fear of abandonment that could be a thing, I guess, uh, that causes a lot of unstable instability in my relationships. But it says not just re- uh, uh, romantic relationships, um, it says relationships with family. That's what I say about family relationships. Your whole family can vote, so. Yeah, my whole family is really. Sorry, I should probably speak up. My bad. <laughs> no, it's like whispering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have all I'm sorts of <laughs> unstable relationships with your family, but your family as a whole does as well. But I think that's kind of normal for a lot of families. Like, it's, it's you know, everybody's got the black sheep of the family and like the goody two I don't know how families go, but. <laughs> I'm kind of both of those in my family, though. I think that's why my brother and I have problems. Like, he... Like, I'm the, the bad one and the favorite. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, but, 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 he does all those things. <laughs> he's not got his shit together. Look at all my stuff. <laughs> I love my brother. He's great, but it's like, I think we just... That is... Kind of have it seemed like you know growing up like I, I felt like I got favoritism. I also just thought that was just because of being older, you know. Um, Having children, yeah. Yeah. Gives me grand children. Those. Uh... So anyway, uh, my life has been filled with unstable relationships, and I didn't think it was me necessarily, but. My younger years, we drank a lot. Like, when I say we, I mean, like, all of my friends. Uh, I've, I've been in bands since I was, like, in high school. And around 23, started playing in bands that got to play places. And as our confidence grew, uh, you know, we were trying to make a, our own stories that, that would... Uh, Fill the halls of rock and roll, you know. Uh, all my heroes were bands, and so we were wild people. Like my entire crew was just a bunch of people who were in different bands. Uh, it was rather awesome. So with unstable relationships, I just you know when you're doing all kinds of illicit things, stability isn't there. I mean, my first band was called A Lesson in Chaos. Well, I guess it was my second band. Um, but I don't know, first in my heart, yeah. What's crazy is we started dating, right? And before I knew Shane, I was friends with his friend Jamie. And Jamie had told me about that band. And he was like, yeah, our band's called The Listening Chaos. And I was like, oh, that's funny. I was like, yeah, it's like a play on words. And I was like, oh, that's so smart. Like, I thought he was, like, really smart for that, coming up with it. <laughs> Years later, I find out he didn't come up with it. Shane did. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Rigue. I love that guy. <laughs> um, unclear shifting self-image. Now, 
this one doesn't fit me at all. Um, unshifting is, uh, or a shifting self image. Uh, basically, I had the same clothes on from. You had a uniform. I had a uniform, yeah, exactly. Um, for 19 years. <laughs> um, my girlfriend before Rose, or I guess it was in between Rose's and I first break up and then we got back together. She was in the same relationship. <laughs> um, she was, was going to go as me for Halloween. Not me, the other girl. Yeah, the other girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was gonna go as me as Halloween, and all my friends thought it was gonna be hilarious mm -hmm. because literally you could, you know, boots that had the zipper on the side, black jeans, black band t shirt. Long black hair. And yeah, still have the long hair. But... There's a book called The Alter, um, the Alter Ego. I can't remember the, the guy's like second wars. So if you want to have an alter ego, say you want to go like be. You know, like a business type person, you have your suit that you put on, and it's, he, he mentions like Steve Jobs, um, Tom <laughs> Ford, all these different guys. Uh, like Bill Gates kind of does it, I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg does it, but like all these major guys, they take that, they put on a uniform, and when they put on that uniform, they step into this alter ego. Um, yeah, so that's that's one thing for, I guess, self image, you know, just creating your own persona. Yeah, I guess um, I like that. I, mean, I just bought a suit, and when you put it on, it does feel completely different. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nice when you put on nice clothes, and you're like, oh, if I get any food on this, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, it's like, oh, I can't. Don't let my kids anywhere near me. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot take these chicken nuggets out of the microwave. They might dust upon my suit. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that one wasn't uh, a thing for me. Um, although, after that big fight where... A bunch of people that were supposed to be my friends uh, turned their back on me. I did have a bit of a self-image problem right there, but then I mean, it's due to trauma rather than personality itself. So. Yeah, and we'll get to some other signs which were which kept me actually chained to myself. Um, so impulsive, self-destructive behavior. Well, I didn't know that was a thing. That I mean. <laughs> When I was nine or ten, maybe eleven, I don't know. I was really young, and uh, when I found the doors, and or the doors found me, and uh, the band. Yeah, I think they. Well, I'm assuming you know, everyone knew that. <laughs> this is okay. So we are in America. Only like twenty percent of the people that watch my videos were from America. So the doors were worldwide, man. <laughs> in the 1970s, you might also be talking. To Actually, people. they were in the 1960s. And he was dead by 1971. But I guess who they were in there for a little bit. <laughs> but I read his biography. Maybe I was 12. I don't 50 know. 50 to 60 years ago. I, I must have been 12 because I was old enough to know all the stuff that was happening in there and. Um, Then, you know, I watched the the Doors biography, or the Doors uh, movie, after I read his biography, and uh, I watched an interview with Jim Morrison, and he said, I believe in a prolonged detachment from the conscious to conscience to sub achieve the subconscious. And when he said it, he was like, I believe in... Prolonged attachment. Like, why are the walls moving? Yeah, he just like <laughs> met, was melting on acid. And I was like, I gotta do what that guy is doing. <laughs> and if you read that biography, and then I got into Guns N' Roses and that band, basically, the rep, and then Marilyn Manson, the recipe to become a musician was in front of me. Ozzy Osbourne with, with uh, the Sabbath and stuff. I was like, see, all you gotta do. It's just the craziest shit that nobody else is going to do. And Steve-o. <laughs> yeah, you, you just do it over and over again. And it becomes second nature to you. Um, so I'm not sure if it was impulsive or just dumb. <laughs> but yeah, I do. do, do uh, I've often engaged in. 
feel like impulsivity is probably not an intelligent thing to be or have or not sure how to do with that. Well, I, I've definitely done all kinds of stuff where I, it's led me to believe that the universe is quite literally looking out for me because, like, how the fuck did I get here? Um, and, yeah, so that one was a lot. Can you imagine that you could have been one of, like, how many people have there been? Something like 12 billion or something? I don't remember. Like, there's, like, 7 billion right now, but there have been, like, all the people throughout history and there have been a few billion more people. Like, there's been all those, like, 20 billion people and you got to be Shane born in the 20th century <laughs> in America. <laughs> you know, anyway, sorry. That was a bit of a <laughs> Um, But yeah, I mean, I, once we, when we had kids, when we, our first year with Seth, we were just like, it was insanely hard for us. We broke down a lot of different ways. And at the end of that year, we, we, we really decided, it's like, well, we're either going to separate now or fix this because we have a kid here and he needs us to be parents. Um, so that really helped with my impulsivity and self-destructive behavior. We... <laughs> <laughs> like, we cut out so many things and we continue to, you know, try to uh limit ourselves on any kind of alcohol and uh bad eating excess yeah mm -hmm. excess that's a good way to put it um self-harm is the next one on here is this not referring to like cutting yes it is exactly and um think you said <clears throat> no i've never done that okay let me not check it Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was checking to guys. We went over. I've never seen you cut yourself. Yeah, I've, I've seen the scars. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 that's not a thing. I do whatever I can to not have my blood be spilled. No one makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think they also have. Uh, I think there's uh, suicidal thoughts and stuff are in there, and it's never that I've had suicidal thoughts i've always had too many people in my life that would i feel would be in peril if i wasn't alive still and um whose life would just you know that's dark stuff man especially like a lot of people commit suicide because they're like oh you know if i wasn't here it really wouldn't matter yeah I yeah and, I, and i've lost a lot of friends to suicide um no so i don't have that but I do have really dark thoughts where um, life is just like too much. Um, it's hard to not necessarily face the day, but like want to be here. You know, that gets really um, the people tend to. Uh, let you down and then when they do on a regular basis um it gets hard to just keep yourself going and there's and it's just the the world destiny feels like there's no way out um that jim morrison biography it's called no one here gets out alive I and mean, the guy's always spoken really deep to me um yeah so there's that oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say uh, self-harm, but then again, uh, drinking and to excess, uh, taking random drugs, whippets, um, that's just, that's just, that's self-harm. That is definitely self-harm, so. Did you feel like you were harming yourself when you did it? No. I felt I was medicating myself when I did all those things. So to you, it wasn't a purposeful detriment. It was. No. It was. But also, it sounds like. Not so much suicidal thoughts as in you don't want to be here. You just haven't been convinced of the point of being here with all these shitty people around you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, these people aren't doing anything. Struggles with nihilism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I've started to think of it a bit like uh, if you talk about like the affirmations or the fucking... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I don't even... I 
I don't think you're going to be cursing that much. Good, because I curse like a <laughs> sailor. And for these videos, we're really trying to make them so people would, can watch them, a bunch of people, and not feel like they're being assaulted um, by our vocabulary. Yeah, you curse a lot. And so, but I'm also trying to stop that too because Seth was never a repeater. And he was, uh, he was definitely, he, he understood those are big people words, you don't know how to say them. Malcolm, I'm, I'm like, God, I'll say something like, yeah, man, man. And it's like, <laughs> or worse, like, he'll drop something like, yeah, man, man. It's like, no. <laughs> so I'm really trying to change my speech habits. The next one is extreme emotional swings. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that everybody was having these problems or these, these emotional swings and that they were just better at handling it than I was. Um, you know, you guys don't have, you're not like ridiculously sad, then happy, then mad, and then uh, okay, then regular <laughs> in the same hour. <laughs> Usually, I think it's a spiral, like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you go down, you know, go like from here to here to here to here, to here. you know, jumping over the line. Maybe that's what it is the borderline. Like, Bam, I'm okay now, I'm mad, <laughs> now I'm happy. <laughs> That could be because they, they, they say the borderline of neurosis or psychosis. It's like, man, there's that edge, man. It's right fucking there all the time. Oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, that is uh, extremely true with me. Uh, I can be walking down the hall pushing my cart at work, and you know, I, I was fine and dandy. And came up the thing, and I like, literally turned the corner, and the world just got dark. And it's like, man, I'm not going to be able to pull any of this stuff off. <laughs> and uh, weird things, like, they're, like, we'll just, it's like a, a bullet or something flying, and then it gets hit by something, it just completely veers off track. Is that a day or whole mood? No, not, not the whole day. It's, uh, yeah, especially now, I'm going to get better at it. Nah, you seem to be getting better, better at it. Um, well, now that I'm realizing that it's not, it's not normal and that it is actually your brain attacking you. It's that stupid talking Tom game Miss has been playing now. There's like weird sound effects on my phone. <laughs> I was like sitting there doing stuff. All of a sudden I hear, meow. <laughs> <laughs> multiple times a little bit it'll happen like right before I get a text message so I hear my text message but then the meow sound beforehand and I'm like did I just actually hear that or what's what's happening right now <laughs> Storm are you in here? Yeah do, 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 do. yeah I did look for Storm one time because they kind of <laughs> I was like really? is this a different cat? I thought it might have been uh, the downstairs cat and like snuck upstairs or something alright Mermaid does have that weird meow yeah anyway sorry <laughs> uh, so yeah emotional uh Extreme emotional swings. That is, um, again, I've I, I thought uh, I've always been I you know I've been a singer for a long long time and a poet for even longer and uh, I just thought well, it was you know that's why I wrote things down. Um, yeah, I would be mad or I'd be sad or then there's the other one the the almost manic states where I get in these long periods where. Um, we're just doing all kinds of stuff, all kinds, we're learning stuff, we're getting stuff done, um, learning new things, then bam, just can't take a life anymore. So then we go to the chronic feelings of emptiness. It goes right back to like the suicidal thoughts. Yeah, yeah, and so again, so I've been... A musician since I was in fifth grade and uh, when I was younger than that I was asking my dad for a guitar or maybe it was then I was wanting I wanted a guitar so I could be in a band and I remember my dad saying well you better be the singer because your ego is too big to be in someone else's band and uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> it really hurt my feelings at the time, though. Yeah, I remember crying about that. I was working in the yard, and, you know, just like, <laughs> but, uh. Because you, you wanted to be the, the guitar or something? Yeah, mm -hmm. wanted to be Slash. And, uh, or Santana. So, well, I took that shot to heart, and, um, so I started writing down poems and stuff. <laughs> But then I finally got a chance to be in someone's band in, uh, in my junior year in high school. And uh, I got into this guy's house. And his house was the house that they filmed Harry and the Hendersons in. And, uh, <laughs> well, his outside of the house was what they filmed. It. But then when they went to his house, it was really, really dirty. So they filmed in the neighbor's house. It was still really dirty. <laughs> this was years and years after that. <laughs> um, so... He didn't have an actual PA system or anything. I was like, and he was really bad at guitar. I'm like, I was better than he was. I was like, you're supposed to be the guitar player. And, um, but he had a drummer. So I stole his drummer and got some other people from the school. And, uh, my friend Tim, he had a PA system. His dad had all the stuff. It was actually, uh, his dad knew Nirvana and Pearl Jam and had a bunch of their old spare gear. I didn't believe Tim at first because Tim was a liar. <laughs> he would, oh, I was gullible. He was always just like, he convinced me his girlfriend was his sister when we first met. Yeah. Well, they, they never did stuff in front of me and stuff. They were like, <laughs> 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 and they didn't even look at anything like it was bad. Uh, but anyway, so when he told me that stuff, I didn't believe. And we got there and he showed me a video of his dad playing with uh, like a benefit concert after Kurt, Kurt had died. And, um, I was like, oh, shit. So that gear was there, and that was the first time I got to sing into microphone. Well, they were playing like Louie Louie or something, and when I my part came in, I was like, just screaming it. Louie Louie! Wow! And it was like, like <laughs> maybe you try singing it. I was singing. <laughs> we did more songs, and everything I did was like that, and then just really. Um, Set me on a metal path there. I was already I always listened to metal all the time, so there was that. Had you listened to metal before that? Oh yeah, I mean, like ninety three. <laughs> uh, my friend Kyle introduced me to death metal, and that was like a saving. What was the first death metal song slash album you listened to? Eaten back to life by Cannibal Corpse, Shredded Humans. I remember very clearly that day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this kid Kyle. And I were I was smoking a bowl and he was smoking a joint and we both realized we're walking to the same bus stop doing the same thing so we just started sharing and he asked me what I listened to and I was like Guns N' Roses, The Doors, blah blah blah, listen to all these all these rock bands. He's like, he's like, what do you listen to? Cannibal Corpse, Eat Back to Life. <laughs> I was like, oh, and he had the, the Eating Back to Life shirt on and, and if you don't know what it is, it's a zombie coming out of the grave, eating his rib, and, uh, it's awesome, and, uh, so, like, yeah, he had the tape in his pocket, I was like, dude, my dad's got a badass stereo system, my dad had a huge stereo system, and, uh, I was like, well, we're gonna listen to this after school, and so, we told everyone we're gonna listen to Cal Court after school, and then come over and hang out, because my parents were, were always gone, and so, everyone always smoked me at my house. And so we put on, we told these girls to come over and uh, we put the speakers outside for the neighbors to all hear and cranked it up really loud. And I don't know if you ever heard this song, and I guess my, my maybe <clears throat> most of you probably haven't, but it starts out with a rumbling bass sound. It's, it just gets louder and louder. It's like, dun, dun. Da, 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 da. It just it's just so just chug and it's like then the guy starts singing like rrr, rrr. It just like what the, it just blew my mind away i had never heard any that i thought metallica was hard at that point in time i thought metallica was heavy and it was blasting into the air from these great speakers and everyone in my neighborhood heard that shit <laughs> did they complain or did they come out like uh, well, I had a strange neighborhood. Your child. <laughs> we had we had strange neighbors, so 
Uh, and no one said anything. <laughs> They're like this is normal. This is totally fine. <laughs> so, so the chronic feeling of emptiness, uh, I've definitely always had, and I filled with metal. Um, I think Goat Horse said, uh, "My screams feel timeless skies. I torture harsh and beautiful." Right. Okay, my screams feel timeless skies. I tortured. I torture harsh and beautiful. Harsh and beautiful. Yeah, so I've always been able to get it out. And this this building or growing emptiness is a good, bit, good way to say it. Um, again, that goes back to the point where I just feel like life has no meaning. Um, yeah, it just it, 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 it's. Uh, my mom is a Christian, really hard, and uh, the church turned me away from it really quickly. I'm talking like first day of uh, Sunday school. It's like, this isn't for me. <laughs> These people were talking shit about Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's on, you know? <laughs> I had a Batman t-shirt on time. I got turned off from Sunday school. We went to church and it was like me or like like 20 other girls, my friend Curtis and me at, in Sunday school. And there was a male teacher, and Sunday school teacher. And he, there was like hella rumors that he was like molesting little girls. But because one little girl specifically, she said never happened. Her family said it never happened. They had him babysit her all the time. But... It was like weird stories, you know, where we were like, mm, I don't know. Anyway, but they had him in charge of the fucking priest, like, uh, you know, whatever kids do during church. What is that called? Uh, oh, Sunday school. school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, that's weird. It doesn't seem like, I don't know. It didn't seem like an intelligent thing to do. And I was like, yeah, God's it, it, really it, talking to you, telling you some shit. Like, how did you that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if... Even a slight rumor ever came out about you, you just just stay away from kids forever at that point in time. It's like, well, yeah, don't be a Sunday school teacher to 20 girls, like yeah. younger girls, like 14 to... Especially if you don't have kids. You mean, like, that's that's the reason you should have, be around kids is because you have kids. Um, they're the only reason. Like, if, if you've been around kids, you realize <laughs> if you didn't have these problems, these, these creatures that are incredibly loud and destructive... Doing her child in the background. <laughs> and he, <Come> on. <laughs> just random noises. <laughs> he's playing uh, video games and so like they'll, they'll jump scare him or he's trying to jump and he's like ah, you know, you know, like when you're playing with your controller and you're going like this the whole time, but like doesn't actually. I mean, maybe it doesn't on the controllers now, but it did it back in the day. You're trying to like, jump and you're going like this with the controller trying to. They were watching some TV yesterday, or the, maybe it was day four, and they're just like, and I'm just. Waxes his juice and it goes right in my face. She's like, <laughs> I'm just like covering orange juice. I'm like, high pulp. <laughs> were you the you were there when Seth fucking poured? Yeah, you know, like I fell asleep on the couch and just walked over and he was just like, wake up, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I was not there for that. You were there for that and you laughed really oh, hard. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, so he was. Oh, that was so when he was really bad. young. There, yeah. there was only Seth then. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, he had like hadn't learned how to walk. I don't think very long before <laughs> that. He was quite young. Uh, so they they are really fun, but it's trying. Yeah. Chronic feelings of emptiness. That's pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Explosive a... anger. See, this is something I've been. How working... many did you need so far? Like four? <laughs> Maybe <a> two shame. <laughs> yeah, most of them uh, I've got. So, so the the explosive anger. I've always had this, and I thought that it was like just anger management problems. So when I read a book on anger management, I thought it was stupid. Um, mostly because I didn't want to do any of that stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been working on that. So like the other day, um, Malcolm, he just whacked the whole thing of juice in my face. So I'm just like... <laughs> You're like, I can't hit him. <laughs> There's no use in screaming. <laughs> Malcolm, go get a towel. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. <laughs> you got a towel. But I thought it was pretty, pretty good. Uh, but at the same time, so like, uh, 
I was at practice one time, and uh, in the middle of a song, we are practicing, and then, like, uh, my mic cord was getting entangled in my other band's electronic drums that we had for that practice there that was still set up. Well, I tried to get untangled and, and still playing the song, and then, like, it started, like, I swear to God, it like, started moving. I thought it was, it was, I was, I was entangled in drum. I'm screaming at it, I was just getting mad as shit. It was like, it was like I basically took it all apart while I made a song, and <laughs> and still like screaming my 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 parts. And as we were finally free, like look over, like the entire band's looking at me, like they're playing their instruments. They're just like, what the fuck, Shane? <laughs> and so uh, yeah, they thought they was just they would tell the story about. Oh, you remember when Shane fought the drum set? Like anything, you brought a drum set yeah. <laughs> on stage in the middle of a song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. anger has been a thing. It's just a little bit too hard. <laughs> Feeling suspicious or out of touch with reality. Like you feel like you are doing something suspicious, or no. you're suspicious of other people. Yeah. When I first started dating Shane, uh, whenever we went out to eat, he always had to face the door because he was afraid someone was going to attack him. You knew a lot of people at the time. <laughs> um, out of touch with reality. I think I've always been out of touch with reality. My parents told me that I couldn't um, be a musician and, and make money doing it. They were mostly right. But I did not work for anybody but myself from 2009 to 2015. I've been through it selling weed, but like, and everyone used to say that it was like, that's not a job, that's not a blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, it actually is a job. It's because of inventory. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff that is like, if you just made it a regular product, it's a job. And then the government started doing it, and so it's a job. And they took my job. You can't really outsell these pot shops. So it was, I was I was decent at it, you know. Uh, I knew a lot of growers, and so I always had a very nice selection. And um, yeah, so I've always been a slightly out of touch reality. Everyone they said you have to do this, and it's like the only thing that ever brought me back to reality is cops. Cops can do whatever they want to you. And anyone who says any different is full of it. They have not seen anything to do with cops. Literally had cops fucking like sticking their tongues out of my face. Like, why am I in handcuffs? Like, mm. I'm like, are you serious now? Right now? It's like, seriously? And they've taken my blood when they they said they they, they, they handed me a phone and said, this is a judge. Or this, no, here's your lawyer. And the lawyer's like, yeah, give me your blood. I was like, you're not my lawyer. And then they hand me a piece of paper. It's like, this is a signed thing by a judge. Yep. I was like, bull fucking shit. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know. Feeling suspicious and out of touch reality? I guess so. Um, I feel like I'm over in, or in, incredibly in touch with reality. <laughs> and that suspiciousness is warranted. But whatever. There's one thing they don't talk about on the thing there. It said uh, borderline into neurosis and psychosis. Neurosis, you know, um, I've always been kind of a weird person. Like I talk to myself and my cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember one time, uh, one of my roommates was there. He's a really quiet guy, like incredibly quiet guy. He hardly ever talked. Yeah, you just sit there and not do stuff. Yeah. Like he, he wasn't even like reading yep. or anything, you know? If I'm sitting there for a long period of time, not doing anything, I'm probably reading a book. Yeah. Or writing, I mean, like, just doing stuff. It's like Watching TV or just, yeah. staring at my phone or something. <laughs> it was the weirdest dude because like his room was insanely clean, but it stunk incredibly bad. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he was at the house one time, and I was at the house one time. I didn't realize he was there. I'm just like talking to my two cats and myself, and 
about crazy, crazy shit, crazy shit for a while. And uh, I came around the corner and he's just sitting in the living room. Again, not doing anything. He's just like, <laughs> like, how long you been there, man? He goes, a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So I've always been kind of in that job and that's what people like me. So I'm kind of fun to be around. You, There's the thing they picked to me. You didn't like you or they didn't like you because you were crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shane, he's crazy. <laughs> I remember this guy. Uh, he's such a nice guy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, he said to me when we met, he goes, everyone's like, so into you, man. I just don't get it. I'm like, wow, man. So you just want to skip the pleasantries and we can just fight? And he goes, I don't fight, dude. Uh, Bob, I just don't like you. I'm like, wow, oh, man, I like you, man. That's, that's hilarious. And so I sat there and I had a beer with him and then I mean, he still didn't like me. I put his van on, on so many shows. The guy is such a punk. And yeah, just funny. It said to me, like, it's like, the, Everyone's so into you. I just don't get it. <laughs> She's like, nobody's into you. Well, I figured out why. <laughs> well, everyone hates Abe. Like, yeah. Yeah. I see why you hate him. I see why everyone hates you. <laughs> well, I didn't know that everyone hated him at the time. I I, I found that out later. <laughs> <laughs> Abe? Oh, yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you got... Seven out of nine. Is that correct? Yeah. And you need four. <laughs> Damn. The really thing, the crappy thing about this is it's not a well-liked uh, personality disorder or trait. Um, what was that comedian? Uh, Doug Stanhope. It's like, oh, you have a disorder? You mean you have a, a personality trait that makes you interesting? <laughs> That's what I was kind of, I was like, I heard that. I was like, yeah, see, I don't I, I know. I never thought about uh, getting therapy for anything until this traumatic event happened to me on Facebook. There's a book, I can't remember what it's called, I think it's Insane Medical, I can't remember, but it's a journal that came out in the 1950s and it has all the different, um, like, psychiatric, psychiatric terms. So the different personality disorders and it's in this book they're all in there and it's like the first time it was ever published like so that everybody could learn about it you know it was like the first dictionary of psychiatry basically and i want to say it's called like ncm is the acronym she's a genius right i didn't write it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that i was trying to say this in my last video like this shit's all new you know it's not like you know, this is a practice that's been around for a really long time. So, you know, maybe just everybody has something up with their personality. Maybe you're not weird. Maybe this is just the one that you are, you know, <laughs> like you have these problems to deal with. Well, I was saying is like, it's not a well-liked one. It has a lot of overlapping things with narcissism and uh, everyone hates that one. <laughs> but it says uh, the one thing we also didn't uh, touch on this one is uh, I've seen on other things. Um, so the lack of empathy. I don't have a lack of empathy. Let's say you have a surplus of empathy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, at one point in time, uh, I, I believed myself to be an empath until everyone started talking about, oh, I'm an empath. It's like, <laughs> even if I am one, I'm not telling anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying you're a what are you, indigo child. I'm an indigo it's child. Like, oh, I see your aura. <laughs> well, can I have some of those mushrooms? Because that's the only way you're seeing auras. <laughs> They talk about that in the um, the ninth insight or the. I mean, I was, as soon as I said that, I was like, "Well, no, it's not so necessarily true, but I don't want to." Really, that's a completely different video. Yeah. And haven't been done on my stuff. I'll have to be able to see anyone's aura. The Celestine prophecy. Yeah, Celestine right. prophecy, tenth insight. It's a cool book. If you have not read that, it's actually mm -hmm. it's not, but it's not the it's not like a literary masterpiece, but it is. It does have some cool like parables you know that will teach you some things it's actually yeah. and, and it has this feeling that the, the bad writing in it is on purpose so you just get this information that they're trying to hide this information in this they're trying to dumb it down a bit for you 
Well, I also, like, they, they, in the story, they kind of make it seem like they, they snuck these papers out and stuff, so. They're trying to make it exciting. And... Yeah, but at the same time, like, that would be the, the actual way to sneak it out, is to write it into something else, and then it's not even that at all. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. But yeah, there's the Celestine Prophecies and then the 10th Insight. This is video is going to be too long to get most people to watch it, but. Okay. We still did it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. We're going to go now. Bye. See you guys.